All right, hey everybody. <clears throat> so now we're going to do the more advanced method where we have a pass through display. And so I want to first show you guys what you're gonna need. So I have this uh, bar uh, this uh, shulker that has these barrels in it and each barrel has a signal strength from one to 15. And that's obtained just by placing items in the barrel. And the amount of items in the barrel will dictate the amount of signal strength. So you can do this yourself. For instance, I'll give you an example of what seven looks like. Sorry. Place that there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Apparently gives you 7 signal strength. Um, so, yeah, you can figure this out for your own and then uh, put them in an anvil or whatever and then name it with the signal strength and then make your own box. So, that's what you're going to want to do for the rest of this tutorial is generate some signal strength in, uh, in some uh, furnaces and have them named so you can scroll over them and see what signal strength is in it and whether or not that barrel is empty like that one is. Or I had NBT but it didn't say the signal strength so it wasn't worth it. Anyway, so what we're going to do is we're going to have like uh, we're going to make two parallel lines like this and then what we're going to do is we're going to place comparators like this. We're going to put repeaters in both sides like this and I'm going to change my speed down to 1.3 I'm moving too fast. All right, so now we're going to grab a 15 signal strength barrel. Place it like that, and destroy the ones below it. And of course, that those have no. Uh, make sure they have items in it when you place it, otherwise, it would be pretty useless. So I must. There we go, okay. So now what we're gonna do is right now we're just gonna put a shit ton of repeaters right here. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, five, like that. We'll put them all in one tick. And that's basically our signal out. And then we're gonna have our signal in here. We're gonna do the same thing with our signal in. We're gonna put a crap ton here. I right, know we'll, we'll just leave it like that actually. Okay, so what I want to show you guys now is if we, uh, I'm just gonna use torches now just for an example, but this won't have torches in it in the final build. We just need to invert some data right now. So for instance, watch this. If I flip this line and this line off, data comes through that here. Because what we're doing is we're saying if this is off and this is off, signal can flow from the back through. So we really don't need this here because there's no cell behind it, but it's just going to be for when we stack it. Because you can see now this one here is going to have... Like this one, two, three. And so now we can say when this one is on, and this one is on. So this is going to be the way we're going to decode X and Y. So we're basically going to want these to be our x's and these to be our y's. So we're going to want these to all be on the same axis, if that makes sense. So what we're going to do is we also want to pair power through. We want to be able to have a pass through that I was telling you guys about. So for now, we're just going to put a shit ton of repeaters for a pass through. So we can work on all the other logic and the stacking and get it to extend the signal strength. And then we'll get rid of whatever repeaters we don't need or whatever and, and optimize it from there. But for now, this is just a good way to figure out where our signals in and out need to be just to uh, get everything uh, set up in the right orientation. And you want them all in one tick. Okay, so now what we can see is now we can also just say, if this was an XY pixel that was decoded by another address, we can just pass it through. We can say this one can just come through the module. And we can also say, we, we can say, we can also, uh, oops, I don't know why I destroyed these. So you can say like, we can have this XY decoder telling it that it's gonna generate this value here while we're passing through a value on that one. If that makes sense. And if this one is coming on, if you're decoding this XY value while also decoding this XY value, well, it's, you're decoding two pixel values that are the same, it's not, they just or together. So like that's the functionality that should be there. You know, so it doesn't make sense to write the same pixel address in two different XY decoders. The whole point of having more than one is to do two different pixels at a time. So 
that's why this is useful. So now we're going to show you. How, I'm going to show you how to make this snack vertically and horizontally in such a way that you can just easily hook these up. So let's do that. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to get. Um, we're going to try to get these together like this. So we're going to break our pass through right now for this. Alright, instead we're going to put comparators here, powering through. And these comparators are going to be on subtract mode. And now what we're going to do is on the side here, we're going to have comparators here. Oh, these don't have to be on subtract mode. And these comparators are going to be outputting into here some signal strength. And we're going to want to input into here 14. So we're going to come into here, grab our 14 signal strength barrels, and we're going to place them right here like this. Oops, are these empty? Ooh, that can't be good. Should I not copy the game? Throw this out. I'll grab a to that, and we'll put one in. That didn't increase it. Does that increase it? All right. So now we have 14. So one minus the max is 14, apparently. So now I will copy that as like that, and now we can place it. Okay, cool. All right, that works. So now we have 14. Wow, that took a lot more effort than it should have. Okay, and now we will place. Okay, so now you can see what happens is we're taking the signal, we're taking 15 minus 14, and we're making it pass through here. So now watch this. If we block off both here like this, and right here, we put like that. So now we can say the Y address is always high like this, right? Because we want that torch there. So now we can say at the Y address, if that's on, and the X address is on, decode that pixel. Right? We can also say pass through a value because if this is off and that's only passing one signal strength through, it can come through here and come through without powering the next one, without screwing anything up. So inputting one signal strength through doesn't screw anything up. So that's how we can pass data through like that. So that's our that's going to be our technique here to have a pass through plus an XY decoder. So this is going to be the X address and this is going to be the Y address. So that's how this is going to work. So we've just configured this side for the Y. Now we got to get the X address. But first what we're going to do is uh, stack this 15. So let's do that. So I'm going to get rid of uh, any inputs like that. I'm going to stand here, or place a, that position and then position two here. That's a nice two wide cell. And now I'm gonna stack. We already have one plus one, so I need to stack this 13. Now I should have. Oh wait, no. I'm gonna stack that 14. Sorry, because this first one is. Um, remember, it doesn't actually come from anywhere behind it. Okay, so now we should have. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Oh, we need to stack one more. Yeah, okay. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Now we have 16 outputs, and we can get rid of this last spot right here. Let me see if we can also that. Okay. So now what we want is we can uh, put in our signal strength here and see how far this reaches. And you'll see that it runs out of signal strength here, so we'll put a repeater like that. And now what we can do is we can add a delay like this, and now we just sync the y-axis. Okay, so now we have to build it the, uh, this part here. So this is going to have to stack vertically. 
So we're gonna have to grab some slabs. Make sure you don't accidentally misclick the timing to two ticks. And we just want to sanity check ourselves here that this is gonna work like that. All right, and now what we want to do is figure out where our signal strength input is going to be. Um, for instance, where is the, the 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 data going to come from to actually uh, like apply signal up like that? Is it going to come from here? If so, then we have to devise a way to get it out. So what we we need to figure out is how how we're actually going to do that. The other thing we need to uh, keep in mind is not only do we have to do that, but we're going to actually have to worry about signal extending like this. I guess it wouldn't have to be that far. Um, so that's why we're going to build it like this, with how far it's going to have to. We're going to have to extend signal like that in mind. And well, that's why we have these four that wide like that. So we know that it'll reach. So what we can do, I guess, is just position one, position two. Um, oh. Expand one to grab that. And then stack, we already have one and we want to stack that so then another 14 times. So that should be six. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Okay. So now we can see what happens if we apply signal strength from here. It's not going to reach, obviously. So if we do our trick, we can do this. We don't need to worry about putting a, block, a solid block here to power down. We'll just let that one do the trick. And then that comes up. And then obviously we run out of signal strength again, so we have to do the same thing. Do hickey um, here. And this time, I guess we'll use the full signal strength. We'll do that. Okay. So now, how do we sync this? Well, these are gonna have. Uh, unfortunately, if we have to have this on, these on two tick like this. And these ones below will have to be on more than two ticks. They have to be on uh, three tick here. But you can't run a two tick pulse through a three tick repeater. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go position one, or position one. Position two, move one. And then we'll put. Uh, blocks and all these except for where there needs to be three ticks and now I have one two one two one two one two one two uh, wait is that gonna be produce the bug that I always run into maybe I need to reverse the order one one two yeah we'll do that one position two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, six, seven. All right, we'll we'll double check to make sure we don't get this bug that I'm thinking we might get. So first off, let's generate a two tick clock or a two tick high, two tick low. There's other ways to generate it, but this is an easy way. Okay, and let's see if we have if we do one, one, two it gets blocked, but if we do one, two, one, okay, it goes through. So, so we have to reverse the order here. Like that, that's why. I just checked that, okay, cool. But if you just have two tick, it'll come through like that. Especially if it's just going into the side of a comparator. So that'll work. Okay, so now we have we can see how this is synced. We can say these this path here takes three ticks all the way up to here, and then this takes one, two, three, all the way up to there, and this takes one, two, three to there. Nice. 
and three to there because it comes up through that one back down. Okay, so now that that's synced and it's moved all the way out to there, we can now do um, position one. Position two, expand, I don't know, three or something, and then stack 15. Okay. Nice. I guess while we're at it, we should do position one there, position two there. How do I want to do this? We just do this like this. Two, three, four, five. Position one. Position two. Stack fifteen. Expand thirty-two. Stack fourteen. That fuck shit up. Yeah, they did. Uh, fuck. Uh, expand one. Contract one. No, fuck. Expand one. Contract one. There we go. Is that going to work? No, it's not. Okay, so we just gotta redo this the thing here. One, two, three, four, five, position one, position two. Stack fifteen. Expand thirty-two. Stack thirteen. Can't do that either. Okay, this is gonna shit. Uh, this is gonna suck. So we gotta. Oh man, that sucks. Okay, position one. Position one. Position two. Stack thirteen. Position one. Position two. Stack thirteen. Sorry, this is gonna suck having to do it like this. But it's the only way. That's also why I said this is a little bit more of an advanced tutorial. Because <laughs> it's not a super easy build. Well, it is in the sense that it's just an XY decoder, but it's a little complicated in terms of how you have to build it. There's all these tricks that I've learned to account for when you know you're going to have to extend signal out for 15, so like don't make it super compact. Like ex Leave space for that kind of deal, which worked out perfectly in this... So now we can stack this back part. We can do uh, position one, position two, expand one to grab that, and that should stack. Now there should be no conflicting stuff, so stack uh, 15. Nice. Okay. And now we just have to stack this back part. And we're getting there. So we'll do position one. Position two, I guess. No, position. Two. Yeah, we'll do it like that. And then stack 15. Position one. Position two. Expand uh, three. Something like that. Yeah. Okay. Oops. And uh, we'll just have to restack 
this right here. Okay, just gotta get this to stack downwards. Position one, position two, stack 15. Nice. Okay, we're getting there. We are getting there. Now, why isn't it? Uh, okay, so I think we need to update. If we do that, okay, nice. Yeah, all the cells came out. That's exactly what should happen when everything gets updated. I just want to make sure that that would happen. Because right now we're basically saying load everything because all the X and all the Y values are off, which says, you know, if, if it's off and the other one's off, then load it. And if all of them are off, then it's loading every value. But I just have to refresh it. So now you can see all of the outputs are on. Okay. So now since all of our outputs are on, all we have to do now is hook up our X decoder here and our Y decoder to the other side. So now, oh, I can get rid of this clock, get rid of this, um, and of course you can get rid of the torches and stuff in your XY decoder to make everything compatible, but I'm just going to grab these. And I guess uh, the next tutorial will be on uh, torchless XY decoder, uh, and torchless decoders here, and then we can convert that to being fully torchless in the next tutorial. But anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy from here. And you can see this is why it's nice working with everything in the inverted state by default. So now what we can do is do paste minus A and hopefully it doesn't fuck anything up. And it doesn't. Nice. So now we're just going to update all the redstone, which I guess we can do like this. I think, oh, we just de we put in three, so that's fine. Okay. So now you can see that the outputs turn off except for like one row. So now when we hook up the other decoder, position one, and you're gonna be asking how am I gonna hook this one up if it's facing the wrong way. Well, it's as simple as this. We're gonna copy. going to flip. I think that would land me here. Nice. Okay. So undo. Paste minus A. I think that will work. And we can still get a pixel out. Okay. Nice. Now all we have to do is put in, uh, we'll do this, position one, position two, expand one, stack uh, 15, and then we'll just update the top like that. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, two. So they should go up there every spot. Nice. Okay, there we go. So there is your XY decoder now that you can decode an XY value. There's no torches inside here, so if you do the decoders here, uh, torchless, you will have a fully torchless. And you have a way of then having a bitmap that you can pass through, or you know, you just hook up another one of these behind it, and then you have another XY decoder. So here's two ways of doing the same thing, just this way here allows you to do some more cool things. So I guess I can show you what you're actually able to do with that. So let's actually do that. So if I do slash home, um, let's see, 
we're gonna do uh, where, what is it called? What did I? Uh, slash home oh um, multi bros that's what it's called okay so um, before I, we get too carried away and I show you the example of like a bigger screen of this or a bigger version of this I want to go through and actually show you guys how to make it a little quicker because um, it's something I kind of glanced over and I'm looking back at the footage and I want to cover this um, because obviously you can speed it up so we want to take this path here that comes through here and make it faster. So what we did before is we just had repeaters all coming out just because we didn't want to deal with any interference that might come out. So what I did now is uh, I deleted this first repeater coming out, which we can do that everywhere because there's always going to be protection from next to it like that. So we can do that all the way across. So if you do position one, position two, stack, uh, let's say, uh, well, first off, I want to make this powered on like the other ones so that when we stack it, it's in the default state for all the other ones and we're not screwing with anything. Okay. Um, so now we're going to stack that 15 times. Then what you can do is you can put a block here, and there won't be any interference powering in that block from the next one, because there's already a block next to it as well, so we can take advantage of that. Which means we can then stack this, position 1, position 2, 15 times. Okay. We're getting there, so now we have all these repeaters, how do we take care of these? And, uh, get rid of this, these blocks up here. Okay, so now what do we do? We place blocks like that. And this only works when you have enough to block off the edges like that. So now what we can do is position one, position two, stack 15, position one, position two, Okay. So now what we can do is go position one here. Alright, no, we're gonna have to do this uh, in slices down, sorry. So we're gonna have to do position one there, position two there. I guess we should have just stacked it downwards. Um, stack 15. Like that. Okay, yeah, so we're gonna have to do that for all of them. Position one, position two, stack 15. Position one, position two, stack 15. World edit kind of makes this nice, even though it sucks that we have to do it individually like this because of the, uh, the signal strength extension that we had to do on all the individual sides. If we were to stack it down, then we'd get like this spot all the way down like that, which we don't want. Which is why we have to do it by hand like this. Well, even though it's really not by hand. <clears throat> Alright, we're almost done. Also, if you know that this is going to like a uh, SR latch screen, what you can do is you can get rid of these redstone lines if you wanted, and you can replace them with like uh, observers with rails, so the rails don't have to update like re uh, redstone dust slows. There we go. Okay. And right, now that we have it all brought out, we can do this. Yeah. 
And now you'll have a bus. Uh, expand one, stack 15. Oh. And there you go. So now that should be fully interference free. And it should be a lot quicker than it was before. So let's try it out and see what happens if I put in an XY address. Hopefully I just get one spot somewhere turning on. That isn't too promising. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Get that flooded like that. Hmm. Now let's see what's going on. Maybe we just need to update all the redstone. So yeah, I think that's just a byproduct of world edit, and we're about to find out if that's true or not. Hmm. Huh? Why is this one on? Oh. Okay, that's an easy fix. And that's all we have to do. Go through and plus block by hand. And then re update the switch to Yeah, for some reason <laughs> she wasn't updating. Okay, yeah, it works. It's uh, interference-free, but um, now, but you might have to go through and update some redstone if you world edited it. Oh, that's moving it across. Nice. See how it's synchronous? There's no like rip. Like it doesn't like slowly move over. It just goes to where it's supposed to. That's what's nice about things being synced. Nice, I went up to five. All right, seems to be working now. It looks like we updated everything. This should bring it all the way to the top left corner. Nice. Okay, looks like it's interference free. And now you guys can take, uh, do, doing the same thing here. You can, oh, you need a repeater coming into the back there. And then from here, you can do whatever you want. You really don't need that, yeah. So yeah, now, um, Back to the other footage. Uh, so as you can see here, we have four XY screens. The decoder is hooked up to one screen, and each screen is 64 by 64. So accounting for you know the amount of repeaters that you need to go all, all the way up and everything, that's why these screens are as big as they are. And then we're using uh, rails here instead of redstone to update or to minimize you know redstone dust lag because it you know that's really laggy. If you can minimize dust, might as well. So. That's why these are useful. So what this is doing, what this is able to do, is it's able to draw four triangles at once, basically two pixels per tick. Um, so what's going on is each line drawer here works. At, uh, these were made by Pensy, by the way. So each line drawer, but uh, Nano and I put together this unit, uh, like putting all, all of this crap together. Well, and Pensy helped as well as of course. But um, so each line drawer runs, uh, calculates a pixel every six ticks, and they're synchronous. So if you just offset their outputs by two ticks each, two ticks, two ticks, and then you know the last one is able to go, um, you're able to then have it uh, 
two ticks, every two ticks you have a pixel. So if every two ticks you have a pixel, that's a pixel every half a second. So for every one of these, there's a pixel half a second. So two of these, there's a pixel per second. Now four of them, that's two pixels per second. So we're able to draw four triangles because each one of these draws one triangle because there's three line drawers per unit. And I'm just freezing right now. And that's what this is useful for. So if you want to draw a lot of stuff to a screen at once, you want to do some massively parallel computations. You're able to do that now with this screen like technology. So I hope this has enabled you guys to build some really cool stuff. Let me know what you guys think. I know this is a long video, uh, so if you made it this far, congratulations. Leave a like, subscribe, all that stuff. You know, it really helps me out. And uh, yeah, let me know what you guys build with this stuff and or what you want to build with this stuff. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Peace out.